Hey there, and welcome to One Church Online. We're so glad that you've joined us today for today's service. My name is Nathan, and it's my privilege to welcome you to One Church Online. We are One Church based in many different locations, and online is one of them. If you're new, we're so glad that you've taken the time just to jump in, um, and we want to welcome you to One Church. Each, each service, if you're watching this live, you can get involved and type in the chat. We love that. Let us know where you're watching from. Say hi. Engage with those with the church that are watching and from various different spaces. I firmly believe this, that, that God isn't limited by our location. So wherever we're watching this from, wherever and whenever you are watching this, God can speak to you. God wants to connect with you and he is ready, waiting for you to lean in. Like, What has he got to share with you? today. So let me encourage you, have some faith, have some expectation about today's service. If you want to connect with us throughout the week, you can do so. The links to our social media um, accounts are all in the description. Go there, follow them and check out what's happening throughout the week. Also, please subscribe to this channel. It lets you know when any new videos come out. And if you, if you feel so, so inclined or so brave, share this video too. Share it on your social media. Like maybe there's someone that would really be blessed by what's happening here at One Church that would love to, to join and doesn't know what's happening. So feel free to share as well. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the service. Hello church, how are you doing today? Are you enjoying the sun? I am so thankful for the sun. Summer has finally arrived in One Church Gloucester. Let me, um, let me encourage you before we go into worship because God has been challenging me on my thankfulness today. Because so often we make thankfulness about us. How we feel determines on how we thank someone. And today how we feel in church can determine how we thank God and we make it about us but you see the Bible says in Psalm 100 it says come come into the temple come into the come into the presence of God come into the courts with thanksgiving and praise with thanksgiving and praise and the Bible is full of one-liners that say just give thanks just give thanks doesn't matter how you feel today just give thanks because thanks isn't about us it's about honouring the one. It's not about us. So, so church, let me challenge you. What are you thankful for today? What are you thankful for? Not necessarily about what God's done for you, or what he can do for you, but who he is to you. Because we can always be thankful for who God is to us, no matter how we're feeling. So let's spend 20 seconds, 20 seconds, before we move into worship, thanking God. I encourage you to stand up, church, and raise your hands. For you guys online, do this in your living room. Stand up right now and honour the one. No matter how you're feeling today, honour the one. Thank him for who he is to you.
Spirit. I'm after the Spirit. It's more than a feeling. And I don't need a reason to keep chasing who you are. I can see every breathe. I want your presence, feet on the earth. I want to live
up here if there's a song if you want to lift your hands and worship please do it it's just an audience of one now you and your Jesus come on
Great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the dark,
on, church. Death has lost its grip on you. Death no longer has any hold over you. Every chain is broken. Every chain that once holds you back is broken. Death has no grip on you. Hallelujah. We are free this morning. Thank you, Lord. We are free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. We declare that freedom today. We declare that freedom over this congregation in Jesus' name. Every victory is yours, Jesus. Every victory is yours. Every chain is broken. Every chain. one line in this song as I was preparing for Sunday which really stood out to me and it's the one where it says about that one voice silences the enemy now can I just say something the enemy's voice isn't actually silenced to the point that you can never hear the lies of the enemy so he's still speaking but what I want to challenge you on today is which is the voice that speaks louder in your life what is the voice that speaks louder is it the voice of truth of Jesus or is it the voice of the lies of the enemy? Because remember, all the enemy has is lies and deception. He has no other power over you. Lies and deception. So when we sing this song, I want you to think about which voice is it you're allowing to speak over your life on a daily basis? Do you believe the negative doctor's report? Do you believe the words that someone speaks over you that are harsh and unkind? Or do you choose to look at the Word of God and see what the Word of God says about you and choose to let that voice speak so much louder than the lies of the enemy? Because I challenge you, yes, the enemy's voice is silenced in that he has no authority, but the enemy will still speak to you and he will still lie to you, but he has no power. So it says this in Colossians 2, chapter 15, if I can get my scripture up. Okay. So, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So the devil, Satan, has no authority in your life. So when we sing that line, the one voice that silences the enemy, you've got to understand that you have to silence the enemy in your life, okay? Jesus has already triumphed over him, so it's just up to you now to silence his lies, to silence every word that comes against the truth of what the Word of God says. And when you do that, the victory in your life will just rocket and soar and you will be just amazing for Jesus. So we're going to sing this song. Sing the whole thing passionately, but remember, one voice has silenced the enemy forever, period. End of statement. Amen.
church you're in fine voice this morning in fine voice what an amazing Jesus we have what a victory he's won but we've just I someone came up with a word and I think there's someone in here who needs to hear this because the victory isn't just for the others you see around you but it is for every single person who calls Jesus their Lord and Savior so Mark do you want to join me and just share what yeah I, I just saw this picture I did and I saw this image of somebody boxing in a boxing ring with Satan 
and they were having this fight with Satan and Jesus was in the ring as well and Jesus was the referee and in a boxing match I don't know if any of you know much about boxing but it's a 10 count if you get knocked down for a 10 count you're out fights over so this fight was going on and you were exchanging blows and you were winning this fight against Satan and then all of a sudden he started hitting you back with some blows and then he caught you with this big overhand punch and I just saw you go down in this fight and then Jesus then started the count he started going one two three four five and you were trying to get up six seven eight nine ten and at this moment Satan put his hands up and was running around the ring yes I've won and then Jesus looked at Satan and went 11 12 13 14 and Satan said whoa 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 I won I won that's a 10 count and Jesus said no 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 you don't understand I will never count out or count down any of my children and his love for you will never fail and I don't know about you 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 might have felt like you've had a blow and you might have felt like oh I've lost I'm out almost but Jesus would say to you this morning I will never count out any of my children come on there's a voice in you this morning let's shout about this this is amazing every victory is yours let's sing Every victory is yours. Every victory is yours. You rose. You reign. Come on, death is buried. Death is buried in the grave. Hell could not defy your name. You rose. You reign. Every Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice this morning. Lift up your voice. Lift up his name this morning. We lift your name, Jesus. 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 Hey, I, sh I should just close this, but, but what a word. And there's, and there's response in this room and online. Uh, because as this is one of those mornings where God is just speaking, God's moving. Uh, we had another word from Julie, just that there are, there are people who need to find their voice, refine, rediscover their voice, find the voice. What are you crying out for today? What have you lost? It's time to find your voice this morning. And, and in all honesty, sometimes all we can shout is Jesus. <laughs> and as he stands over you with his arms held high, his hands raised, continuing that count because you are not done yet. You are not done yet. There is more. There is more. There is more. You may feel like you've been silenced. You may feel like life is getting on top of you. But there is more. Because he still reigns. So come on. 30 seconds left. Why don't you just call something out? Call out the name of Jesus. If you've got nothing call on the name of Jesus. If you've got something, say, Jesus, just remind me, recall something to my heart. What have I lost? Oh, Jesus, we live. you are our living hope. You are our living hope. We don't call on a dead God. We don't call on a memory. We don't call on the past. We call on the present. We call on the future. And we declare that you are our living hope, Jesus Christ. 
Father, we thank you for your presence in this room. We thank you for your presence being communicated online. God, wherever we are connecting here right now, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are so present with us. Even if you've been in this room and you feel like you're an onlooker or you're watching online and you feel like you're an onlooker, you are not, you are part of this and God has something for you. Jesus, we thank you that you are with us. We thank you that you love us. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. We thank you that you are still counting. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you guys. Why don't you grab a seat? Smile to the person next to you. Say, it's great to be sitting next to you this morning. Uh, If you're watching online on your own, smile to the camera and say, it's great to be here. Find a mirror. Hey, God bless you. Uh, For anyone who doesn't know know me, my name's Stuart, and uh, along with Tom this morning, we're just going to be hosting the service, just hosting uh, your way through here. We just want to give you a special welcome if you're with us for the first time uh, online or in the room. Thank you so much for choosing One Church as your Sunday morning. We pray that you've already experienced something. We pray that you are uh, already feeling a sense of God is real, God is with me, and we just want to help you through that. I want to give a special welcome to Pastor Simon Jarvis, who is with us this morning, fresh, fresh from uh, up and down Snowden yesterday, got home at 1 a.m., I believe. Now, if that resilience, strength, uh, integrity, whatever it is, it's it's wonderful to have you with us, Pastor Simon. Uh, And just to say, I'm going to be moving into our time of of collecting our our tithes and our offerings. But just to say, on an offering uh, that we have taken uh, for uh, the Ukraine appeal that we raised a couple of weeks ago, uh, we have taken 6,200 as one church network. That is worth more than that. Come on. Make some noise. That is amazing, eh? How good is that? Um, Fantastic. As I said, I I just want to read a scripture to you. This is from Acts chapter 6 because, hey, we are in Acts right now, aren't we? Well and truly as a church. If you're here for the first time, we're working through a book of the Bible called Acts and what that looks like as a church. But in Acts chapter 6, verses 3 to 7, um, the disciples are faced with an issue where they feel they are, their time is being taken. The church is so generous. The church is doing such a good job of looking after others that their time is being taken with things like, like handing out food and, 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 and looking after people. Uh, but what they're trying to do is release. And it says this in Acts chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men uh, from among you who are known to be full of spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. The the proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of Holy Spirit. Also Philip, here go the names, Procurus, Nicanor, uh, Timon, Pumba, uh, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread, increased rapidly, and a large number of priests uh, became obedient to the faith. What I love about this account is that they were so overwhelmed with the generosity of the church, they, they weren't able to outwork uh, that it was taking up too much of their time to outwork the generosity. The church was so generous in their giving. The church was so generous in their time. The church was so, they, 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 were, they were inundated. They, they were overwhelmed with how to outwork it. And I think that's such a beautiful picture of church. A church that is so willing and ready to give that the leadership don't know what to do with it. So they go, right. Let's release more and let's release others to go and do that. And I just believe that is the picture of generosity. We all like It's not just about how much you give. It's about your heart position. And this morning, I just want to encourage you. We're going to take up our tithes and our offerings. And what is your heart position? Do you want to give so that the church has a problem to overcome? That would be amazing, eh? That we would give. And I think that that 6,200 for the Ukraine offering, that like... We will use that, but that's a problem, isn't it? We got, to, you know, we we got to use the like. We we've been over blessed. So bless you guys. Uh, the the offering stewards are going to be taking this up. If you want to give, uh, there is a QR code on the back of the chair in front of you. Uh, you can give by cash or by contact list at the end of the service. And um, but just to move on with that story, what I love about that story is this as well: is the men they chose to distribute food. Uh, food. The requirement was that they were full of wisdom and of the Holy Spirit. And again, you see the picture of the disciples saying, we're going to dedicate our time to preaching. 
But hey, even for distribution of food, these men need to be full of wisdom, the Holy Spirit. And again, what a picture of church. You may not be standing here. You may not be standing there. But, but the, the call on every single one of us as a believer is to be full of wisdom and the Holy Spirit. And God will position you and use you in the way that he sees you. There is a place for you in this church. Please hear me. There is a place for you. You're sitting back row. You're, you know, you're sitting middle. You're sitting front. There is a place for you in the church. It matters. Your life matters. Your service matters. Your ministry matters. And I just want to tee up. Uh, today we have our volunteer lunch. Woo, woo. Uh, so this is a lunch and a bouncy castle and some games and some awards. This is for anyone who volunteers in one church. So thank you if you have signed up. If you are a volunteer and you haven't signed up, um, listen, please still come out. The only thing I would say is food has been bought with the number that signed up. So just be like, you might want to pop home and grab some food. Or if you hang around, I reckon there will definitely be some left. And I'll just like be considering that. But today, when service is finished at one o'clock, we're going to be gathering outside and just celebrating that every single one of you matters. Everyone matters who contributes to church. Wonderful. Uh, it is my joy and my privilege to introduce our speaker for this morning. Uh, Pastor Lisa Daniels leads One Church in Posmead and is doing a phenomenal job with her, with her husband Liam and the family there building church. She is a woman who is genuinely a phenomenal communicator. She's going to finish off our series on the Holy Spirit. Why don't we welcome Pastor Lisa Daniels. Hey, hey. Good morning, everybody. Oh man, how good is God? Can anyone feel his presence in the place today? Can you feel the presence of God in your home today? I, I just want to pray before we get stuck in. Father God, I thank you that I don't have to do anything in my own strength, but I get to do it full of your Holy Spirit. And that when I do that, I lack no good thing. And Holy Spirit, I, come, I pray that you come and fill and flood this place, that you would lead us this morning to the place that you want us to be in. Yeah. And if you agree with that, why don't you say amen? amen. Oh, awesome. It's so good to see you today. I love the fact that Stu said uh, Lisa's doing a phenomenal job uh, with her husband, Liam, like as if like he was the project that... Uh, <laughs> Just, just made me smile this morning. I know none of you thought that, but I thought, yeah, that's accurate. I think like, uh, that's bad because he's not here to defend himself. Uh, it's so good to see you. My name is Lisa, and I uh, lead the uh, Podsmead location of One Church with my husband, Liam. Uh, and we have two amazing kids, Maya Praise Daniels and Mercy Ocean. And uh, Daniels, too. Uh, uh, <laughs> Anything can happen this morning, everybody. Uh, uh, it is going amazingly in Podsmead. We've just had like an OC Kids big weekend that we've been running, uh, designed to get our families from the community in. It's been absolutely phenomenal. So the kids that came on the Saturday came on the Sunday, which is exactly uh, what we wanted to do, and amazing conversations with the parents. It's awesome when you get to uh, invite a community parent to meet with Jesus and also eat a mealworm like that's the the sign of a good Sunday and that can only happen when the OC kids team is involved am I right can I get an amen in the room uh, but it is going good guns there they send their love Liam is um, in pods me this morning with the kids um, which is really cool we were in the great series I get to wrap up this series all about the Holy Spirit I've loved exploring uh, all the things that we've explored uh, during this series I love that we are uh, focusing for a second uh, on the aftermath that happened and that day that we call Pentecost that is still being outworked today. The moment where the, the presence of God went from filling temples to filling people. And that we are unashamedly a Pentecostal church. And that means that we believe that the presence of God isn't just in this room, but it's in me. And that means that it changes everything about me. And uh, today, uh, this message is called Weird Wonder and Walk. Weird Wonder and Walk. Why don't you just touch your neighbor and say, it's about to get weird. It's about to get weird. If you're at home today, why don't you try in the chat, it's about to get 
Weird. We're going to read Acts 5 uh, from verse 12, and it says this. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. It's about to get weird. And the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought their sick to the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits. And all of them were healed. All of them were healed. I I love these verses and we'll get back to those in a little minute. But a few weeks ago, I went to go um, and speak in uh, the church that my parents found Jesus in. It's a little Anglican church in Cornwall and it was was a great, uh, great time. In fact, as we were driving down, we realized that we were about a week out of it being 30 years since the moment my mum got filled with the Holy Spirit in that very place. We went stood on the spot where she met with Jesus for the first time and was filled uh, with the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you that little story because that's kind of a cool story. It's about to get weird. Uh, uh, I don't know if he's here today, but I know he serves on the guest services team here. But anybody know Keith Morgan? You know, the guy. So um, he was actually in this church too. Keith and Annie were in this church too. And my parents had been invited to uh, like a course, like an alpha course where you get to explore faith and and figure it out because my mum was like, well, if there is a God, I need to know who he is. And so she'd gone and my dad went along and said, I'm coming with you because I don't want you to get brainwashed, which is hilarious. Uh, And I went along and, and she was, the night before the Sunday, she was talking to her parents and saying, well, telling them all the things that she was learning and she realized, I, I, suppose it, I, I suppose it could be true. And suddenly she had this revelation moment that maybe Jesus is who he says he was. And then the next day she found herself sat in a pew in a little cold Anglican church on Pentecost Sunday. And Keith Morgan prayed at the end of the service and said, so now God, anyone who believes in you, would you come and fill them with your Holy Spirit? That simply, and my mum, all of a sudden in the seat, started going, shaking in her seat, full on shaking in their seat. My dad sat next to her. Now you need to know, this is a cold Anglican church where everything echoes. Oh look, the presence of God is just growing. Just <laughs> Whoa. And she started to shake. Now, my mum would never do that. She was like, you know, never make a scene. And she started to shake, and the sound started to feel that my dad's going, Deb, what are you doing? Stop moving. And she's like, I can't. I don't know what's happening. As the presence of God filled her, and she, had, she was just like, this must be real because this is not me. And, and I'll tell you that story today because that is a weird story. But can I tell you, everything in that moment changed. My life completely changed forever. Because when God gets a hold of you, strange things happen. But amazing, wonderful, incredible things that change the trajectory of your life forever. But I was speaking in this church and I was telling this story. And I poked a bit of fun at myself being a, a Pentecostal in an Anglican church. And as I was making a bit of a joke, uh, it got weird again. Because uh, a girl on the second row down just said, uh, excuse me. I was like, am I in Podsmead? because that happens. She said, "Uh, what is a Pentecostal? And suddenly, this dark mist came upon me as I was like, that's a great question. I don't know. What is a Pentecostal? As I was just like, I managed to find an answer. I knew really. But I had this sudden moment of absolute panic where I was like, well, what does it mean to be a Pentecostal? And, now, and also, I was stumbling over this because you need to know that the kind of Pentecostal church that I grew up in was the kind where me and my friends would look at each other at a certain point in the service and go, it's about to get weird. As the 93-year-old flag lady pulls up her leotard straps and gets to work. As, as, the, uh, 
as the lady whose name is Shirley, who we nicknamed Shaking Shirley, who played keyboard during the service and the presence of God would come in and she'd start to shake, which is an absolute nightmare if you're playing the keyboard. Uh, and not to mention the fact that there was a, a guy that would always stand up at one point in the service, the same point in the service every week, and he would be like, Shandora, 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 Shandora. And then the same woman would go, I believe that the Lord is saying, and interpret the tongue. <laughs> That's the kind of uh, amazing church that I grew up in. And I know that I'm kind of poking a little bit of fun today, but I need you to know that it was also not that unusual for me to see miracles of healing every week. It was not unusual for me to see people who were possessed come in and walk out set free. It was not unusual for me to see young people praying for old people and them going out in the presence of the Spirit. It wasn't unusual for me to see all of these things. Let me tell you, it was weird, but it was wonderful. It was weird, but it was wonderful. And in amongst all the weird, I could not deny the wonder. I could not unsee the things that I had seen. It was an environment where the wonder after wonder, work after work of the Holy Spirit started to pour itself out. And I just want you to know today, he's not just the wonder-working God of our Bibles, but he is the wonder-working God of today. He's the wonder-working God of your today, right here, right now. Why don't you just knock the person next to you and say, it's weird, but it's wonderful. <laughs> I want to tell you some stories today because I want faith to rise in this moment. I want faith to rise in this moment. I could tell you a story about a, a girl who uh, was at a worship event. She walked into the worship event, and now she always wore glasses, quite thick glasses, and she walked into the service, and, and as she walked into the service, the room was full of people worshiping, and as she walked in, she was like, oh, my glasses are really steamed up, and so she took them off and, and rubbed them on her clothes and put them back on, and she was like, oh, no, they're, they're still really steamed steamed up what's going on so she cleaned them again third time put them on and she's like hang on a minute I can see better without my glasses on I can see better without my glasses on and you know the atmosphere of worship in that room created a place where she could just walk in she wasn't even asking for a miracle she walked in but God healed her eyes and she has never worn glasses ever since. I, I can tell you my own story of that. As a young um, girl, I had uh, this moment where the, the uh, opticians had said, basically, you've got to wear glasses. And I was like, I am not having that. And uh, so I didn't want to wear them. I was like, there's too many trees to climb. There's too many football games I need to play. And I, that is an occupational hazard. So I was like, I don't want to do that. And I was in a service because we didn't have kids work every week. We were in a service and the pastor, I heard them say, um, you know, you go to the elders of the church and ask them to be healed and they'll be healed. I think it's the verse that's in James, right? So I heard that as a young child I was like well that's it then so I went up and tugged the, the arm of one of the elders in the church and he was a bit like oh hello and uh, and I was like that man talking about the pastor said that if you pray for me I'll be healed and he was like well yes I suppose <laughs> I suppose it <laughs> Oh, I wish you could see this guy's face. And, and, uh, and he, he was like, right, and just played a quick prayer. And I walked away, and I, I can tell you, my eyes were completely healed. Wow. Went back to the opticians to have my glasses fitted and all that sort of stuff. And I was like, you need to test me again because my eyes are better. You can imagine the look on the face of the optician. And my mum, who hadn't been a uh, Christian that long, was like, oh, my goodness. Like, what is she going on about? Like, this is really embarrassing. You're blowing my cover. And, uh, and uh, but... But they tested, and sure enough, my eyes were healed. Now, the receptionist in the, um, in the next room heard this, and she was like, I've got a really bad back. Do you think that you could pray for my back? And my mum's like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. So uh, she's like, just prayed for this woman's back. Back completely, amazingly healed. I, I, I've been in rooms where my mum, in fact, my mum's leg got broken badly in three places. They reset her leg uh, too short, which meant that that then uh, had an effect on her back where she was getting awful back pain. And again, we were in a meeting and somebody said, you don't need to live like this. Prayed for her. Her leg grew to the point where the, the pins that had been 
put into her leg had been broken off in that moment and she walked out completely different. She's had to go back to the doctors and they're like, unexplained leg extension, you know, that's... <laughs> That's what it is. I can tell you all these stories. I can tell you stories about when people have, uh, have not known what was going on in my life and walked alongside me and said, God says this. And I'm like, oh, how did you know that? Because God is always with us. And he wants to say the right thing at the right time. And he will use people that are willing to say it. Now, all these stories are amazing, and all these stories are pretty weird, and I've experienced lots of very weird things. I've been in rooms where uh, people have been prayed for, and the whole room just fell under the weight of the presence of God, and these things, I'll be honest, bother me, because it is weird, and maybe it bothers you too, but I think we need to ask ourselves why it bothers us why it bothers us. In Isaiah 29, 13, now you need to understand this, but these verses are written to a specific people at a specific time, but I think there is wisdom in this for us today. And it says this, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules and they have been taught that they have been taught. Therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Now, I want you to get this point. Wonders take our eyes off our own ability. They take our eyes off our own understanding. They take our, our eyes off our traditions and expectations and place them back on a God who will not be contained by our traditions or our expectations. And that is why God wants to move in wonders through us. I wonder, has our wisdom wiped out our wonder? And I believe today that God is asking us afresh, will you wake up to the wonder? Will you wake up to the wonder? When I think about Peter, who was mentioned in those verses just then, in Acts 5, we, we see this man who did amazing wonders, that God used him for amazing, outstanding wonders, where people literally lined the streets with sick people so that they would be healed. He was just a regular guy like you and me, but the gifts of the Spirit, which are in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, these things uh, uh, that, that just are uh, like wisdom and knowledge of faith and healing and miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, tongues and interpretation of tongues. All these things are gifts given to us that externally work in our world that reveal the wonder and the magnificent power of our incredible God that would choose people like you and like me who are weird and are messed up and have our own stuff and who are weak and not able, but he would use us to do something external that draws people to see this wonder working God. Let's just consider the man Peter for a minute. He was doing these amazing things. He's seeing a, a dead woman risen from the dead who is speaking boldly and seeing thousands of people come to know Jesus. And that's a really cool story, isn't it? Really cool story. But spoiler alert, Peter hasn't always been like that. He was just a normal bloke like you and me. I'm not a bloke, but we'll go with that. He was just a normal person like you and me. He was just an average guy that had a whole heap of shortcomings like you and like me. He was a bit rough and ready. He was a bit wild. He was a bit all or nothing. He was, fell asleep when his mate needed him most before his, his mate died. He, he lost it and he chopped a dude's ear off. He had a major anger issue problem. He, he, and then in Luke 23, we see this story of Peter sat by the fireside as Jesus has been led away and he's going to be crucified. And he sat by the fireside just outside of where Jesus is being kept. And suddenly somebody spots him and says, hey, you know that guy. You're, you're, part, of the, you're part of that way, those people. You're part of those people. And suddenly Peter's like, no, that's not me. And they ask him again and a third time and he denies them every time. He was weak and he was wimpy. And he ran away and denied who Jesus really was. So how does Peter at the fire denying God go from Peter denying God at the fire 
to Peter completely on fire and celebrating all the wonders and the works of Jesus working through him. It was the presence of God that changed him from the inside out. It changed the way he walked and it did wonders through him. You know, I need you to know this today that God wants to do wonders before your eyes. And he wants to do wonders to your walk. John 13 and 35 says this, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples. This is Jesus speaking. If you love one another. He doesn't just want to do wonders to on the outside that we get to watch and get to enjoy. He wants to do wonders to the way that we walk. So that people look on and they go, that's a love like I haven't seen before. Why do they love each other like that? Why do they treat each other like that? You will be known by the way that you love one another. Galatians 5 says this, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, in the Amplified Version it says, the work which his presence within accomplishes is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. What a beautiful verse, and I love when we read it in the Amplified Version that we understand that this is not something you have to work at. This is something that His Spirit will accomplish in you. You see, God wants to do wonders before your eyes, but He wants to do wonders to the way that you walk. And that means this, that some of us, we've been trying to make our bank accounts create peace in our life. But... Only God can do a peace like that in your world, a peace that surpasses all understanding. Some of us, we've been trying to be kind, but it's so difficult with every blow that God is, uh, that the world has hit us with, with every blow that we've just walked through and, and we found ourselves trapped and, and, and against opposition. And it's really hard to be kind when people aren't kind back. But you know, a kindness like this, the kindness like this is a kindness that only God can do. When you're facing all those things anyway. Some of us have been walking through such a difficult and a hard a depression. And life just feels like it's weighty on top of us. And you're like, how can I have joy? I can just about get out of bed. You don't know the things that have happened to me. You don't know all these difficult things that I'm facing. I just can't do it. And God says to you today, hey, my joy is a joy that I will accomplish in you through my spirit. Where you've been labelled an addict, where you've been, uh, where you've lost it like Peter, and you've got an anger problem, where you've struggled with these different things that are going on in your world, and you're like, oh, I just wish that I could overcome these things. God says, Hey, let my Holy Spirit accomplish self-control in you. Let my Holy Spirit produce a gentleness in you that even when you're being accused of all sorts of things, you can have the courage and the conviction to know I know who I am in Christ Jesus. I want to encourage you today that it is through his presence that he is accomplishing those things. And maybe if Hayden and the guys can join me. I want to encourage you today that God wants to do wonders before our eyes. And he wants to do wonders to our walk. That we would be people that allow the Holy Spirit, allow the presence of God to start to accomplish these things in our life, where people look on to our walk and go, hang on a minute, there is something different about these guys, there's something different about the way that they're walking, there's something different about the way that they act, there's something different, there's a joy that lasts, there's a joy that outlasts sickness, there's a joy that outlasts their financial needs, there's a joy that outlasts the grief that they've experienced, there's a joy that lasts. God wants to do wonders through you and he wants to do wonders to you. Why don't we just stand to our feet all across this room? If God can transform Peter's life, if the Holy Spirit, as he fell on Peter on that day of Pentecost, could take a week, all or nothing, wimp, and transform his life to the point where he works wonders on God's behalf. If it can take Peter who had an anger issue and had no self-control and definitely didn't have gentleness. 
if he could take Peter and, and change his walk, then I believe the same Holy Spirit can do the same through us and in us today. I just, there's going to be some people at home and in the room today who need to respond to this. Because this isn't about the preacher going, hey, let's see miracles. This is about God saying, wake up to my wonder. Would you, would you wake up to my wonder? I want to use you, not that person. I want to use you. There's a, there's a prophecy in you. There's, there's a miracle in you. I'm give, giving you the gift of healing. I'm giving you the gift of prophecy. I'm giving you these gifts today. I'm giving you a gift of faith. I'm giving you a gift for miracles today. That is who God is. And if you need a miracle today, or if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, where you get to see God do wonders to your walk, and wanders through you. I want you to respond today and I want you to come out to the front right now and we're going to pray. We're going to pray and we're going to worship. If you want to, if you long to see gifts of healing, if you long to see God speak to you and give you a word of knowledge that changes the trajectory of someone's life forever. Why don't you just come to the front right now? Come on all over this place. If you've been afraid of the weird that comes with God, I want you to find yourself in a place that gets set free today. That fear wouldn't stop you from moving in these gifts today. If you've been wrestling with something that is difficult, if you've been wrestling with something that is just, you don't like it, I want to tell you something today. God does not expect you to bypass your brain. He gave you your brain. He wrote whole books on wisdom. And he's also not going to bypass your personality. But he is going to fill you. And he's going to reveal the levels to which that he created you for, the works to which he created you for. Why don't you... Uh, come and start praying for some of these people if you feel so led and at home today the presence of God is going to fill your living rooms right now he's going to meet you right where you're at Holy Spirit come in those places Holy Spirit would you fill would you anoint would you reveal who you are today and right now Father God I pray Lord Jesus that you would just move in their lives right now as these people have responded Holy Spirit would you come and fill afresh would you stoke the fires within them would you turn up the pilot light that you started in them when they were first filled and Holy Spirit would you come and flood and fill right now that you would walk out of this place different in the name of Jesus. That you would walk out of this place filled and afresh, ready for the works that God has called you to. to. He's going to do wonders before your eyes. And he's going to do wonders to your walk. Come on, church, you start to stir yourself up. Start to welcome the presence of God into this place today. God's going to use you to share pictures and visions right now. He's going to release dreams over you. He's going to release miracles from your hands right now. If there's somebody sick in the room today and you're like, yep, I'm sick, put your hand up because the person next to you is going to pray for you and you're going to walk out healed. If you need a, a, a healing miracle today, I have faith for that today. Oh, God wants to do amazing miracles today. If, you're, if you need a miracle in your body, why don't you just raise your hand? Raise your I see a hand here. I see a couple over here. Would you come and ga gather around these people this morning and just lay your hands on them and, and, and declare that they will be healed? The Bible says that we will lay hands on the sick and they would recover.
had a, a word shared with me just at the side and it was that there are some people in the room today and that your life has become so dry that you know that this is what you need you know that this is what you need but you keep saying maybe another time maybe another time and I'm just going to pray for those people right now father I thank you God that there is no life that is too dry that you cannot They'll use it with your love and your Holy Spirit. And so, Holy Spirit, I just ask right now that you would come and meet people right where they're at. That you would give them courage to step into everything that you are, Holy Spirit. Everything that you are. And that they would experience the fullness of your presence. And the fullness of your presence. The fullness of your presence. Jesus, would you come and flood and fill this place today? Do wonders before our eyes and do wonders to our walk, God. Wonders before our eyes and wonders to our walk, Lord Jesus, that we would walk out different, knowing who we are in you, Jesus, knowing what you've called us to. And I just pray right now, Holy Spirit, come, flood, fill, start that fire within us, that we would move like Peter from the fireside to being on fire for you, God. In Jesus' name. Fabulous. Wherever you are, whether you're at home or in the room here, can you just raise your hands? An opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit. This is, an, this is a work of grace for you, for me. In the world that we live in today, I, do you get that sense that there's a fear that, you know, what's going to happen? You know, maybe you're at work and you're watching the TV and thinking, what's going on? More than ever before, the church needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. More than ever before. I can, and we can't rely on the professionals each and every one of us, an empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So where you are, raise your hands. I'm going to ask that God fills us with his Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, now come and without prejudice, every man, every woman, every boy, every, every girl, every person who sits here, stands here, says, Will you fill me? Now, Holy Spirit, come. Make us courageous. Make us brave. Not to be fearful of standing out, but the mark of the Holy Spirit rests upon us. Like a burn mark leaves a blister. God, I don't want a painful blister, but to know your Holy Spirit has touched us. In the name of Jesus, come as a fire into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Very good. Please take your seats and can we show some appreciation to Pastor Lisa? Very good. That's been a great service, isn't it? 
feel very, very refreshed. I just uh, I thought I'd, um, I'd give a, a little bit of an update. Uh, if you're watching online here as, as the senior lead of the network, and just let you know what our next steps are for this church. If you're interested, please stay where you are. And uh, <laughs> if you're pretty bored and you just want to go and have some KFC, please feel free to leave. <laughs> Uh, firstly, firstly, I just want to honour some very outstanding people. I want to uh, honour Amy and the leadership team of One Church Gloucester. I think you'll agree with me, they've done a sterling work for the last six months. Uh, they were set a temporary assignment, but they threw themselves into it and have served this church in an outstanding way. It's been exciting, <laughs> uh, but they've built a solid platform to drive the vision forward. So I thank you in the name of Jesus. we have been a lot of prayer, a lot of deliberation uh, with senior leaders and advisors. And uh, I, I've only got a few minutes, so please come and talk to me. I, I'm very happy to talk about that process we've gone through. But I think you'll understand this is a very unique circumstance that we've had to process through. But I really feel God has helped us. So I am going to reposition my role as senior leader to become what we're going to call an overseeing pastor of One Church Gloucester. In doing so, we're also going to add to the leadership team here we're going to add two extra people to Amy's senior role, and that's going to be Nathan Jordan and Tom Geeches. This is going to fall. We are going to form a bridgehead that's going to do something very exciting in this world. These three people are tremendously anointed and have a call of God on their life. Now, I want to be very clear with you. Uh, this is not a surprise to Amy. <laughs> Neither is it an indictment on her wonderful work. But we've sat down, and if you ask Amy, she only has one desire, and that's to see the church grow fantastically at selfless, she has, you have served selflessly. You've modelled an exemplary character on how to serve. But we feel, as I, and Amy agrees, that this is going to set us up for the next 10 years. And so by coming together, we're going to do this. Amy, you really are a star. Thank you so much. If you could see how awkward she looks at the moment, <laughs> it's very enjoyable. When I first moved here 16 years ago, I felt God show me, give me revelation that this church was going to be like an Antioch church. You need to read, maybe we'll, we'll discuss that in church on Sunday, but have a look in Acts chapter 13. A church that served its city, a church that served its nation, and a church that served its world. And at the time I thought, you're having a laugh. We're just Gloucester. But we may be geographically insignificant. But I tell you what, when the Holy Spirit grabs us and lifts us and places his anointing upon us, that's the only thing you can judge. You do not judge the insignificance of a geography. You judge the significance of who God's put his hands upon. And I am convinced that God has placed his hand upon us to release missionaries, 
to release pastors and preachers and teachers, to plant churches. I believe that God has called us to not just reach the world, but to be a bridgehead that releases these things. You know that, that so we can go forward and, and do these things, but to reach our city as well. I, I believe that we are making impact on the footprint of our immediate community, of the community of our city, of the, the Shire. That there will be a ch cherry and white version of worship that goes around the world one day. I believe God's called us to do this. It's my conviction. So we will continue to serve you, but we need you to pray for us. We need you to stand with us like never before. We, be, we need you to have a faith that says, well, as we serve, we cannot manufacture this, but we are convinced that as we're obedient to God's call in our life, he will unlock something into our community, into the nation, and into the world. Yesterday, I was on top of a mountain called Snowden, praying for four dads and their sons as they, the boys moved from boyhood to manhood. And the Holy Spirit fell upon us on the side of a mountain. I was like, whoa, this is incredible. And I looked at those young men. And I thought, we, by God's grace, we will empower you to serve the world. And that's my commitment. And I promise you, that is the commitment of Amy, of Nathan, and of Tom and the leadership team, we will serve you believing that God will create something that will bring transformation bigger than ever before. So, my time's up, but would you stand as we close in prayer, please? Raise your hands one more time, please. Heavenly Father, we entrust this church to you. It's always belonged to you. And now, as we take the next step, this is our promise. As long as you're with us, we will keep going. We will keep standing on your promises. And Father, may this church become a bridgehead that releases missionaries and pastors. May it, re may it release missionaries into our community. May it, re may it bring restoration to families. May it bring restoration and hope to people's lives. Father, will you be proud of this, this church as it serves you for the glory of God? And as we go our way today, as you have filled us with your Holy Spirit, let us go out knowing that you are with us. And with God is for us, who can be against us? In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. If you have a child that you came with, please pick them up before you go home. That will help us immensely. Anyway, have a brilliant weekend. God bless you.